Okay, guys, so welcome back. In this unit, we'll get into uh, covering the ECG in terms of what we're looking at on that um, recording. So remembering the ECG is essentially just a, if you think of it conceptually, almost like a uh, EMG, but of instead of looking at the electrical activity produced by the skeletal muscle, we're looking at the electrical activity produced by the heart. Um, in fact, uh, this whole thing works is because we can detect that change in current uh, produced by the heart uh, through the skin. It's actually where a lot of those, like kind of, you know, if you look at you know, those different little scammer things you see at a boardwalk or a casino or something like that, where you look at your vital force and stuff like that, they'll have you hold a, a terminal on one side and you can look at a, a you know, a current. It's basically what we're doing here. Uh, we're looking at the change in current between sides uh, produced by the activity here. Now, um, a little bit of a vector review. So remembering just from physics that vectors have both a, a direction and a magnitude. So uh, depending on uh, the source, right, um, of the electrical activity we're capturing, we may get, you know, um, a larger signal that we're going to capture on our ECG or will be recorded on our ECG. The first concept is one I just want to refresh again, is that, you know, vectors, again, have a direction, right? So remembering that our, the mean direction of our electrical activity in our heart moves in that right to left, superior to inferior diagonal. So right to left, superior to inferior, you know, diagonal. Now, why that's relevant is vectors also have a component vector, right? So we know that you know, the activity is moving in this direction, but you know, there is a component vector, there's a, there's a vertical component, there's a horizontal component, right, of this vector, right, this diagonal. Um, why that's important is because, you know, we can still capture activity of this, of this event, right? Flow is moving in that direction, but we can still capture some of that activity um, if we're, you know, orienting our, you know, our electrodes or our leads, um, you know, more in a more of a horizontal fashion, a more of a vertical fashion, right? So we know that there's you know, different resultant vectors. We can still look at the same activity depending on how we're, we're placing our, or orienting our leads, right? So, um, so just remembering for every diagonal vector, there is a, you know, there's a vertical component to it. There's a horizontal component to it as well. Uh, the other thing to remember is, um, again, Going back to signal capture, you know, the closer you are to a microphone, right, the louder, an example, the louder your sound gets. If I move away from my microphone, right, the softer, right, the sound gets that you hear. All I'm doing is biasing, right, or changing the source or the, the changing the distance between the source, which is this example is my speaking voice, to my recording device, right? So, um, so the source in the ECG example of the signal, source of the signal, so again, microphone, source of the signal is me speaking, it's an audio signal. ECG, we're look looking at an electrical signal. The, the, you know, the source in that example is the heart, right? Um, and the, the more, you know, we orient ourselves to that mean vector, the greater the amplitude will be of the signal that we capture on our recording. So the bigger the waves will look, depending how, on how, you know, close oriented we are to that mean vector, the source, right? Um, as well as just, you know, location relative to the heart. The other thing is the size of the choir kind of matters too, right? So again, going back to size or magnitude. So for example, you know, if we have a choir, right, one choir that's, you know, a single, maybe our soloist, right, singing. We put a microphone here. And they're singing, ba, 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 and it's captured by our microphone here. 
So we'll hear sound, right? Because we're producing a source of signal and we're capturing it with our microphone. All right. However, if we've got a bigger choir, right? Multiple people singing. You know, we'll have a much louder sound produced by them, right? Which will translate to a larger volume, right? Or a larger amplitude of sound, and thus our recording will be louder. The amplitude of our recording will be louder. Same sort of thing is true for the heart in multiple, in multiple, multiple ways, right? So if we're looking at larger or more of the, uh, the ventricles, for example, ventricles produce a lot of electrical activity because there's a lot of them and they're very large. They produce a lot of sound. So the, the waveforms that we see from the ventricles are large, are larger than the atrium. It's a larger choir. It also means the more in relationship, right, if, if we place our, um, you know, are we orient or if we're, if we're looking at a slice of, of this activity, if we're looking more an area that captures more ventricle activity, that amplitude is going to be lar larger than it would be at a different view, right? So uh, again, depending on how we orient our leads, we can capture large, we can capture more or less of the choir in a certain sense. And the size of the structure produces, you know, it influences the size of the waveform that we observe. It also means, so in this example, we're just comparing choirs here, right? But say in this example, they're both singing simultaneously. They're both producing signal. Well, what do you think is going to drown out uh, each other? Well, obviously the larger choir, it produces larger sound. This explains why on certain, you know, the certain act events aren't observed unless we, you know, use a, some high, high, you know, high, high tech filter. Um, but the ECG, for example, we don't see atrial repolarization, and that's because it happens at the same time as ventricular depolarization. Ventricular depolarization is a much larger event, a much larger choir, a much larger source of activity. So it will drown that out. So just remembering some of these basic properties from physics on, again, resultant vectors. Again, we can there's, there's a horizontal and a vertical component to every diagonal. Where we place the electrode kind of matters in terms of how large the signal is or not. And then the size of the choir, the source of our activity, influences our sound um, or influences, sorry, the signal that we capture, as well as the placement of that recording device. So again, Another thing to remember, while we said the mean vector does move more or less in a right to left superior to inferior diagonal, there is a, there is a, um, a you know, it's not all frontal plane, right? There is a, Z, or a, a transverse plane activity as well, too. Um, and, you know, the heart is three-dimensional, right? And we'll get into some leads to look at more at the, the transverse plane activity. Other important thing to remember is that when the heart depolarizes, especially we're looking at the ventricles, which are the largest electrical event, they depolarize from inside out, from the septum and the endocardium to the epicardium. They depolarize from inside out. And then they repolarize from outside in. So from epicardium back into the endocardium, um, outside in for repolarization. They depolarize and discharge and conduct from inside out and then from outside in. This is important to remember because the direction, again, of how we're capturing activity matters, right? If we're, if we're capturing electrical activity or signal in the same direction that it's occurring, our deflections should be positive, right? If we're capturing activity in the opposite direction, it's going to look negative. It's moving away from how we're capturing stuff, right? Again, like we talked about as well, the more in line we are, right, the basically the closer our microphone is to our choir, the greater the sound will be, right? If we move it far away from that mean vector, we'll get some sound, 
right? You know, like I said, you know, for example, I've moved myself away from the microphone. You can still hear me, right? So you'll, you'll hear some of the activity, but if I'm really close and really in line with the source or close to the source, the sound is going to be a lot louder. It's the same concept here with the ECG, right? So the more in line we are with that mean vector or the closer we are to the signal that we're trying to capture, the more, the, the greater the quality of the image or the greater the, the, the quality of that amplitude that we're going to capture. And this will make more sense if we start getting into specific leads. But just remembering those concepts, size, magnitude, and direction um, all matter here. And then remembering we're capturing activity. Um, and we're trying to keep you know in the same direction as the uh, mean vector. And if we're going the same direction, we're capturing activity in the same direction, our amplitudes for depolarization should be positive. Now, another thing to kind of remember as well, like we mentioned, um, when we orient ourselves, we're using, you know, we're looking at the heart, we look at it through leads. Now, leads often get conflated with electrodes. Leads and electrodes are not the same thing. Leads are stereotyped views of, you know, of electrical activity, right? So for example, we have a lead set up here that's capturing activity from the right arm, which is our negative terminal, to the positive terminal on our lower leg here, or lower left quadrant, in this direction. So we're capturing electrical activity in this direction. We'll call this lead two. And again, we know that the mean vector of the heart right, goes in that same direction. So it's going to actually give us a pretty good bang for our buck, right, because we're kind of in line with the source of our activity where our microphone is close, right? Now, for example, though, if we place an electrode here, or, or if we're taking a view that's capturing activity going in this direction, and that's not necessarily an electrode, but sometimes we can, we can use an electrode, but if we're capturing activity going in this direction, our positive terminal is here, that was the word I was looking for, terminal. Well, we'll still be capturing some activity, right? But um, we're gonna be capturing a little less than this direction here, this, this orientation. It's, it'll still capture some of it, because again, this has a resultant vector in you know, a, a vertical, as well as a horizontal, right? It's a piece of that mean vector, same here, we can draw that example here. Right, so it's sort of moving in the same direction, but, but it's only capturing a piece of that activity because it's not exactly in line with that vector. Uh, the other thing to remember is, let me kind of clean this up here. Is that, you know, the eye, right? And this will make more sense. So, for example, um, you know, where, wherever our positive terminal is, wherever our positive terminal is, that dictates kind of the, the, the location of the heart that we're looking at, right? So again, our leads are oriented by the negative terminal and the positive terminal, not necessarily the electro, just the terminal. Because um, we'll get into some places, some leads that don't really technically use electrodes, so think terminal. We're always capturing negative activity going from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. And our positive is kind of our eye. It kind of shows us what, what's, what location are we looking at, right? So this one is on the lower part of the heart, right? So we're looking at more the inferior side, where if we put a positive terminal here, it'd be looking more at the lateral side of the heart, right? Looking more at this area. And again, it's not a scale drawing. Um, but just to bear that in mind, or if we put one, another one here, it would still be looking at the inferior side. So again, the leads. Now the leads, again, are not the same as electrodes, right? They're, the leads are just giving us a stereotyped orientation of two terminals, a negative terminal and a positive terminal. And they allow us to look at different, you know, the electroactivity of the heart from different lenses, basically. Um, so we've got Three, three leads are bipolar leads. Uh, lead one, two, and three are unipolar leads, which use a single positive electrode. Um, again, like I mentioned, like they don't, some of these don't actually have a true electrode. The bipolar 
use a true negative and positive electrode. The unipolar only use a single electrode. And then their, their, their negative electrode, the starting point, is, is due to a composite of other electrodes placed in the body, which produces a, um, a rendering, basically, of, of a negative one. So it produces a composite um, of, of a, a composite negative electrode of, due to the orientation of other electrodes on the body. So we'll make more sense in a bit. And then we have our unipolar leads, um, our augmented leads, which actually technically don't really use any true electrode. It's not like, you know, we have a negative, positive. It's due to kind of everything that's kind of producing. This will make more sense in a bit. So uh, the limb leads. So uh, we'll actually pause here, and then we'll get into these more specific leads.